In this playlist, we introduce case classes. Case classes give us the ability to group data together, and they're also the first way in which we allow user-defined types. As that name implies, these are types that are created by the user. So far, all the types that we've used were either part of the Scala library or the Java library. They were things written by other people. But every so often, it's nice if you can create your own types uh, they can help you with your with grouping things. Uh, later on, we'll see that we can add functionality to our types and make it so they do exactly what it is that we want them to do. Now, why is it that we need case classes? To help illustrate this, we should look at the one thing that we know how to do so far that groups data, and that is tuples. So if we start up Scala, we have previously use tuples when we want to put together fixed amounts of data, uh, potentially of different types. So arrays and lists were good for variable length data, but they all had to be the same type. Tuples are how we group things together when everything could be different types, or if they were the same type. You know, we had things like a tuple of a string, int, int, you know, that you might use to, to store, you know, someone's name, age, and uh, I don't know, actually let's go with a double here. Name, age, and GPA, uh, perhaps. Tuples weren't, aren't ideal though. Okay? Some of the challenges with tuples are the fact that each of the different fields inside of here, we get out in different ways. So for example, our student's name an age of and a GPA that was stored in res 0 and when I wanted to get these out I kind of have two approaches I can do things like the underscore methods so underscore 1 underscore 2 underscore 3 or I can go through and do an assignment a val name age GPA equals res zero and that would create new variables. The second form is more self-documenting. These are more meaningful names but it winds up being a fair bit longer. Another problem with the tuple approach is that all tuples with the same types in them are considered equivalent. So even if we did like a type declaration so one of the examples that we're going to play with for our case classes is the concept of a point. And this would be a point in 3D space. And a point in that context is a double, double, double. Well, there are other things you can represent as double, double, doubles. For example, it turns out that colors can be represented as red, green, and blue combinations. And in some representations, these are fractional numbers between 0 and 1. So that could also be a color. The problem is, if I write a function, we'll call it mag for magnitude, that takes a point and returns a double, it's not a hard function to write. It's simply math.square root of, now this is where it gets a little bit less pretty because we are doing these dot underscore methods plus p dot underscore 3 times p dot underscore 3. Okay, so the x component squared plus the y component squared plus the z component squared. It's a nice function. I can define a point that is, uh, how about 1 to 4 and I can call mag on that point. To 4 error type mismatch. Oh, oops. We're actually going to Scala is going to be strict here. We actually need to define that with doubles. Okay, and that works. Here's the problem though. 
The color red is nicely represented as 1.0, 0, 0.0, 0, 0.0. 0. And I can call the magnitude on red, which is really a very meaningless thing to say. Okay, if, if red is going to be a color, it should only be usable in functions that expect colors. It should not be usable in functions that expect points. But because both point and color are fundamentally just tuples of double, 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 there's really no distinction between them. And so the Scala language can't help us out by telling the difference. That's one of the main reasons why we want to use case classes, is that way we can have a case class for a point and a case class for a color, and Scala will be able to tell us if we ever do something dumb, like try to take the magnitude of a color. So we'll have a whole series of videos showing you how we can create our case classes, how we can use them, and basically how we'll integrate them inside of our code.